equity mates. From our mates at Spaceship. Investing made easy. Welcome to another episode of Equity Mates. It is Thursday. It's the uh, last episode for the week here for Equity Mates. I understand that it's not everyone's <laughs> last day, um, but my name is Bryce. And as always, I'm joined by my equity buddy, Ren. How are you going? I'm very good, Bryce. Uh, looking forward to this episode. We are at the end of the financial year. Yep. We're, we're in a new know, year. We're in a new year <laughs> yes. and it's a good time to take a breath and reflect on the year that was. And there's no hotter, I guess, product type in the market at the moment uh, than ETFs. Yes. Um, so we're doing a bit of an ETF year in review, uh, and we're going to see what happened and what we think is going to happen in the year ahead. And to do that, we have brought in an expert to the uh, Equity Mates studio. Well, he's not here given the COVID lockdowns, but it is our pleasure to welcome Mark Monfort to Equity Mates. Mark, welcome back for the second time. Thanks very much for having me for the second time. So turns out I didn't do too badly in the first one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, that is right. Um, for those of you who missed the first episode with, uh, with Mark, Mark is the founder and CEO of New Era Analytics and an expert in all things ETFs. Very active member in the Equity Mates community, um, always giving us an update on what's going on on a month to month basis with ETFs. And as Alex said, we're going to be doing a bit of a review on how everything went last year. So let's start at the top, Mark. We've reached the end of the financial year, as Ren said, and uh, we'd love to, to get your view on a few of the key takeaways from um, 2021 financial year in terms of the e ETF market. Um, so let's start at the top. What are some of the key takeaways? Well, sure. Um, one of the key takeaways was just the rapid growth in terms of ETFs. The size of the market grew over 71% um, for the year. So from the end of June to the 1st of July, um, 2021, we saw the market get to $113.5 billion in funds under management. So that rise of 71% was like 66, 67 billion um, at that time last year. And now it's 113 and a half. And at the rate that it's growing, it's expected to get to probably 120 billion by the end of this year. So it is rising and rising. We've got new ETFs, new styles of ETFs. Um, we saw really popular ones being the global equity type ETF. So there's all these different categories. There's Aussie equities, global equities. They categorize Asia as a separate one in emerging markets, but global was the biggest, 53 billion in that. And domestic equities, so Aussie focus equities were around 31 billion. Um, so that, that's where we're at right now. It's, it's a hot market and it just keeps getting hotter. So Mark, that, that 71% year on year growth in funds under management is pretty incredible. Can, can you help us sort of understand how that compares to years gone by? Is that growth rate speeding up? Is it slowing down? Is it about the same as, as previous years? Um, where does that number sit in the, I guess, the longer term context? I haven't actually crunched the numbers um, to, to give you a specific one right now, but I can tell you that last year was bumped up especially in November with the uh, addition of um, a fund from Magellan, the global open uh, call fund. So that one added um, close to 11, 12 billion in November, plus all the other ETFs that were having uh, inflows and adding their funds under management, uh, you know, furthering up uh, across each of the months. But that was a bump a month. As you can see from the chart there, um, that is not natural growth right there. That is uh, the addition of a new fund. And it's been great for the market to have that kind of um, ability to see, you know, these newer types of funds. And we saw a few other ones um, come up, but uh, that definitely contributed to the 71% growth uh, year on year. Um, I'd have to run the numbers to see exactly what it was from the previous years, but no doubt I'll throw that into the equity mates community. That's a, that's a good plug. If you want to see Mark answer that question and keep up to date with Mark's updates on the ETF market more generally, head to the Equity Mates Facebook discussion group, a wealth of information there and plenty of investors to go on your investing journey with. Uh, but Mark, you mentioned the Magellan uh, open fund there that converted to a open-ended fund, an active ETF um, 
last year, or last financial year, I guess I should say. Uh, and, and that's a trend that we're seeing across the ASX at the moment. We're seeing listed investment companies and listed investment trusts uh, go from that structure to an active ETF structure. Um, given you're the ETF expert, would love to have you break it down. But let's start at the very beginning. For people who are unfamiliar with that term, with that uh, term. what is an active ETF? Yeah, um, good question. So uh, I'm sure many others have kind of spoken about this. So I'm just adding, you know, and repeating, but that's the way that you learn. You, you've got to hear things repeated. Um, traditionally, ETFs, they'll follow uh, an index. So they will um, do that in a way that is either full replication. That means that they buy the same underlying holdings to fully replicate that index, or they'll do synthetic replications. So in synthetic, they'll hold potentially some derivatives or some things that um, closely follow that and they'll they'll follow like a buy and hold type strategy and they're, they're quite transparent with their holdings they'll publish things nearly every day to to showcase what what are in the holdings active ETFs they're not passive um, as implied by the name they're managed by fund managers and there's uh, there's a lot of um, ability for them to outperform so whereas the passive ones track an index the active ones are there that they're, they're built to try to outperform um, any kind of benchmark that they're holding themselves against. They don't always do that. And that's why we see the debate around, you know, which is better active versus passive. Um, I believe that there's room for growth in, sorry, room for both in a portfolio. Um, but yeah, it's, it's one is much more actively managed by a fund manager and the other one is like buy and hold and it's set and forget until the next quarterly or the yearly rebalance that comes up. Um, so that's the difference between the two. So Mark, we've seen more and more um, fund managers uh, sort of launch their own ETF style products. You mentioned the Magellan Global, um, they've got their high conviction as well, obviously to try and capture the attention of uh, the equity mates community, I would imagine. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. What are some of the other, what are some other big names in, in the Australian investing landscape that have launched um, some ETFs on the ASX? Yeah, there's, um, there's quite a few that, and I'm sure that this is going to be a trend that's growing. Um, but you mentioned the Magellan one, Hyperion also did something as well earlier this year when they listed their global growth fund. There's also Loftus Peak with their global disruption fund. There's also Airly with the Australia um, share fund, which follows and tracks their, their, their Airly best ideas. And they've done quite well um early did 30 percent returns um over the one year it was uh, around 16 to 13 percent between each of the others and then there was another one in june that just listed um there was the uh monash absolute in investment company um they used to be listed as an lit under ma1 and now they've turned it into an etf uh, they had quite good returns, so they didn't convert to an ETF because they weren't doing well. And you know, let's let's have a go with this ETF business. They were actually doing quite well. They have strong um, in terms of their track record: nine point seven percent growth annualized over five years. Um, they won a twenty twenty award for the best listed product, um, but it was just because it was trading at a discount. Um, and there was a report from BetaShares, I think, that um, showed that there was four to one growth between ETS versus LITs. So it just made sense that if you wanna continue growing your fund, you need to convert it to an open-ended one um, and move it to an ETF space. That's not to say that LITs, LICs aren't doing well, they are, um, depending on what it is you need for your investment style. But um, yeah, we are seeing that trend. So Monash was the, the latest one in June and who knows, we, we might see some more before the, the year's out. So Mark, if one big trend that we're seeing is this move to active ETFs, I think another trend that can't be ignored is the, uh, the increase in the amount of sustainability and ESG focused products that are coming to market. Um, so let's, uh, let's talk about that a little bit. Um, what new ETFs were issued in this uh, ESG investing space in F21? Any key names that you're uh, watching closely? Um, ETFs is they've all got great ticker names. Um, so the symbology being a ticker that they um, they're, they're listed by. So we had Earth E R T H um, from BetaShares, and uh, obviously that one you know it is something to do with Earth. It, it is something that is 
tracking, you know, what is uh, happening with the environment and climate change. And then there's also CLNE or Clean. That's from Vanek. Um, that's their Global Clean Energy ETF. We also had a new one in June from um, iShares. So that iShares product is IESG. And um, all of these uh, different ETFs that came to market, they're following that trend that uh, it's not just in ETFs, but it's investing across um, the, the whole kind of landscape. You're even seeing it from superannuation funds that are doing more um, to try to you know, do the, the right thing by the environment by putting money into companies that are not doing harm to the environment. So Oz Ethical, Future Super, and some of these other superannuation funds are doing that too. But yeah, we're certainly seeing that with uh, ETFs. There's about 21 ETFs that have a sustainable or an ESG or ethical type of tilt to them. So a couple of those ones we mentioned there. So Mark, we mentioned at the top there, huge inflows over the last um, year into global equities, Aussie equities as well. How does that compare specifically to inflows into ESG products um, and sustainably focused products, I imagine? Uh, well, is it a record as well? Yeah, it was uh, in terms of growth, I, I looked at year to date, not over the, the full year. So I'd have to um, kind of guess at what the numbers were. But that 4.2 billion where we are at now, um, I was at a conference uh, for ESG ETFs uh, earlier in the year, and that was in March. And we looked when we looked at the March numbers, it was only 3.3 billion. So now that we've added another couple of months, three months, we're at 4.2 billion and it's still heating up. I wouldn't call it quite exponential growth, um, but that is, you know, continuing to rise. We probably will see some further innovation um, being done there by the different ESG providers. You know, you've got the passive ESG providers, uh, you've got active as well. And so there, there's quite a few interesting things kind of happening there. Um, but like I said, it was 46% growth um, year to date. So from January, start of January to where we are in June. Uh, we'll see where that gets to, you know, over the next couple of months. Looking at that chart on the screen there, it's pretty incredible, incredible the growth that it's seen. It's definitely reflected in the conversations that we're hearing in the equity mates community and reflected in the, I guess, the focus of fund managers that we're interviewing. So it'll be interesting to see how that number keeps growing. Now, Mark, we're almost out of time, unfortunately, but here at Equity Mates, whenever it's the start of the year or the end of the year, we love making bold predictions. Uh, we're rarely right, but it doesn't stop us making them. So uh, we're in a new financial year and we'd love to finish by uh, getting a bold prediction from you uh, related to ETFs for the year ahead. So looking 12 months down the line, uh, can you give us a bold prediction for the ETF market? This is the time where you throw the disclaimer up under the screen, right? So um, whilst that's happening, um, you know, we, we spoke about ESG. We spoke about the difference between active and passive. I'm going to throw out a, a bold call around active and combining that with ESG. So there's two ETFs that play in that space, um, INES and IMPQ. I'm going to throw my hat in the ring behind IMPQ, um, given that it is actively managed and, you know, with certain things that are happening in the ESG, SG space that you want to avoid, um, such as greenwashing, uh, then you definitely want to be involved in a, you know, an active manager that is in constant talks with uh, the different companies that they pick in their portfolio, and has had uh, rising in terms of um, popularity, their inflows and number of trades that are happening. So it's just continuing to get popular, but it's also returned quite well over the year. And that's about 40%. So IMPQ is definitely something to look at if you're an ESG investor. Nice one, Mark. We love a bold prediction, so we will certainly hold you to account and <laughs> check in with you at, at this time next year. But thank you for your time today on, on Equity Mates. Uh, I would encourage our audience and anyone watching to check out New Era Analytics. And as Ren said, definitely come and join us on, in our Facebook community as well, as uh, Mark is often uh, updating us on the latest trends in the ETF space. So, Mark, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Take care. End of another week here at AusBiz. Um, we hope that you are able to take some sort of value from the content that we had this week. And I uh, certainly enjoyed our conversation with Julian and, uh, and yesterday with Owen as well. It's been a great week. Mm, some very, uh, some conflicting views, I must say. <laughs> Owen talking about the future of Apple. Yeah. Julian talking about uh, tech uh, potentially being overvalued. So 
that's what we love about this at Ausbiz. We can speak to a wide variety of fund managers, get their views, and never give our own. <laughs> yeah, love it, love it. That's that's how we roll. But um, look, we'll be back next week, as always, with plenty more content, plenty more guests, and discussion on industry and stocks. If you'd like more information, head to equitymates.com. Uh, follow us on all of the social channels. If you want to catch up on some of the videos that we've done here, head to the Ausbiz website uh, for on demand as well as our YouTube. But Ren, we'll be back next week. Sounds good. Equity Mates, from our mates at Spaceship. Investing made easy.